It's by now no secret that the U.S. real estate market in 2023 has been more resilient than anyone expected uh, at the beginning of the year. But it's also important to note that mortgage rates have surged over 7% recently, and that is sure to slow down any buyer eagerness. Uh, the how sensitive are home buyers to 7% mortgage rates? We can indeed see some signals already that buyers pause. It's a holiday today, so we won't know the impact on rates until tomorrow and more until next week, but this is one data point, uh, and so it's important to watch for several weeks whether this inflection point, it, this is an inflection point like, like September 9th last year, or whether our trends of the year, increasingly strengthening trends of the year, continue. Uh, we know that demand has outpaced supply all year, but uh, mortgage rates really did jump this week and, and with the debt ceiling fiasco in Congress and, and otherwise current, you know, continued strong economic news, there are signals though that some buyers put their actions on hold this week. The rate of newly pending contracts, for example, fell by 5%. Um, this purchase volume has been getting closer to last year's pace, but that trend stopped this week. If rates stay over 7%, do the little green shoots of market strength quickly wither away? Uh, they did last September when rates, the last time when rates jumped over 7%. Uh, so is this week the the, the week the surprise boomlet of 2023 real estate goes bust again? Uh, really, or, or is it just a, a moment and then we continue the trends that we've seen for most of the year already? Well, that's, the, that's what we're looking for in the data right now. Altos Research Every Week tracks every home for sale in the country. We analyze all the pricing, all the supply and demand, all the changes in that data, and, and we make it available to you before you see it in the traditional channels. That's why... For example, if there's longer fallout from the debt ceiling or higher mortgage rates, we'll see it in the data pretty quickly. And I'm Mike Simonson, I'm the founder of Altos, and let's look at what we can see for the last week of May, 2023. There are 393,000 single family homes in contract right now. These are the, the pendings uh, for sales that will complete generally in June and July. That number is unchanged from last week. I've been talking about how uh, as inventory has climbed a bit, the pending sales have also been growing right along with it. Well, this week, the pending sales did not grow with inventory. This could be a signal that some buyers froze as rates jumped over 7%. There are 14% fewer homes in contract now than last year at this time. In December and January, there were 35% fewer homes in contract than a year prior. So the sales rate gap from last year has been narrowing. And you can see the dark red bars in this chart. That's the count of pendings in any given week. See at the right end of the chart, the pending sales have been climbing pretty steadily. This week took a pause. The light red bars are the total count of unsold inventory of single family homes. The most striking thing on this chart to me is how how the dramatically inventory was rising last year at this time while sales were not increasing. This year, sales rate climbed before inventory. That's how we know this is a supply constrained market. Buyers are basically buying anything that's available, except maybe this week. The total number of, of homes in contract plateaued uh, while inventory rose uh, 2% this week. It, it's, it's one week. That's not a trend, and, and since uh, over the weekend there seems like a debt ceiling deal was reached, uh, we can expect markets to move on Tuesday, so maybe mortgage rates dip back down. Maybe those buyers who paused last week are ready to resume a deal this week. Specifically, we can see that trend in the new pendings. The, that's the count of homes that went into contract this week, and it's down 5% from a week prior. That is also 14% fewer than last year at this time. So we didn't gain any ground on the sales gap from 2022. We have been com consistently gaining ground, but that halted this week with a rate spike. Uh, 
June should see the peak time for home sales, and it'll be fascinating to see if by the third quarter we continue to gain ground. Last year's second half of the year was so frozen. Uh, you can see in this chart, the light colored line here is, is last year with each week the count of the newly pending transactions per week. The, the sales rate fell dramatically after July 4th last year. Uh, this coming week will include the data, the, the holiday, so it's probably not, it will, probably won't bounce. Um, and so it'll really be two weeks from now before we can, can see if there's a pattern. The pattern I'm watching for is, is the rate of sales continuing to catch up with last year. Could we, for example, by later in the summer, be doing more sales than the year prior? That'd be surprising, but that's what we're looking for in the trend. Uh, there are pending sales. So these are the pending sales which we've been we've been tracking very closely at Altos these days. And I've, I've been saying that this is a supply-constrained market, meaning that if more inventory were available, we'd have more home sales. Uh, this week, we saw a little more inventory. It's the end of May, and you'd, you'd hope that we'd be getting some more homes to buy. Uh, available inventory of unsold single-family homes rose by 2.1% this week to 434,000. This is good. Uh, actually, the, in, the increase in inventory was still slightly less than our forecast model had been expecting for the week uh, based on recent years' behavior mid to late May, but it is ticking up a little more inventory. Uh, there are now just 19% more homes on the market now than last year at this time. In February, there were 70% more homes on the market than a year prior. So this is just a dramatically different housing market than we started 2023 with. And unless mortgage rates stay over 7% and buyers shut down for a prolonged time, I expect in the next few months, we'll have year-over-year -year inventory declines. So the gap of inventory is, is shrinking really quickly, even in this week when, when sales rates didn't, didn't rise. So we've been talking about how year-over-year year inventory is up, but the gap is closing. And year-over-year, year, the rate of sales is down, but the gap is closing. This is also true of home prices. Last year, the price of the pendings plateaued in May, and this year, they're still inching upwards. Uh, the, price, uh, the, the price of the pendings is, is below last year by a fraction, but it, but it climbed this week. So the median price of the homes in contract now is $384,900. That's up a fraction from last week. Uh, it's a little closer to the sales prices from a year ago. So just 1.3% lower than last year's prices. Home prices last June and July started ratcheting down pretty quickly each week. And some of that was seasonal, of course, but the decline was more than seasonal. So demand had stopped. So this year, it's gonna be really fascinating to watch if sales prices tick up in June, we could enter July with year-over-year -year home price gains. It's now peak time for, for pricing, so you know seasonality could kick in, and we might not get prices back over last year's. But for the next four or five weeks, it's going to be really fun to watch this metric here: the the med that the median price of the single-family homes in contract. Uh, remember that these are in contract. So the sales will close in June and July, and we'll be hearing about that data in August. And so at least until August, we'll you know, hear the headlines talking about how home prices are down from 2022. Definitely a few more months of negative headlines, even as the underlying data is changing. When we look at the homes for sale across the country, the median price of the single family homes this week is $450,000. That's unchanged from last week. It's also the same as last year at this time. Home prices started moving down quickly in July last year, again, right? And uh, so some of that was seasonal, but the prices declines were more than seasonal. And uh, the question is, will this summer season hold up a little more firmly and that really, that's really the signal that, that we're looking for. So if rates stay over 7%, do those recent trends reverse? Since the new listings are a leading indicator, uh, the price of the new listings cohort each week, it very often 
peaks in in May, like the last week of May, like right now. So this year, the median price of the new listings is four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. That's one point two percent below last year. Two of the three media the price measures that we use at Altos for understanding where sales prices will be in the future, they're still negative year over year. That gap is closing. Uh, and I'm watching to see if 7% mortgage rates persist and maybe the gap widens again. Speaking of seasonality, in a lot of years, price reductions are accelerating much faster by now. Usually inventory builds in March, April, May, and then anything that's still on the market starts taking a price cut. This year, because so few homes are on the market, and the sales rate has been increasing, fewer sellers have had to cut their prices. So if rates stay elevated over 7%, and the pause we see this week sticks around, we should see price cuts accelerate like we did last September. If rates drift back lower, then maybe not. There are now 30.2% of the single family homes on the market that have, had price, have taken a price cut. That's up a little tick from last week, 30 basis points. Uh, many years, price cuts would be increasing by 60, 70, 80 basis points per week right now. So that's why if you look at the dark red line here, you can see that this market has had fewer price cuts than 2019. And looks like by July, we'll have fewer price cuts than 2018 too. In 2018, the market was slowing. So this year, the market has been accelerating. Again, this might be a moment of an inflection point where the trends of the first half of the year change abruptly. That's what we're keeping our eyes out. Never a dull moment in real estate. So the, the basic fact remains true, though. Home buyers and sellers need to know what's happening. They have a lot of opinions and a lot of noise to filter. And if you are one who needs to get your buyers and sellers the actual data as soon as it becomes available, they need you for it. So in order to communicate what's happening in your local market, go to altosresearch.com book a free consult with our team. We'll help you inc interpret the crazy market data for your clients right now. It's a critical time to be properly informed about the market. Please join us.